Let's bring in NBC News medical contributor and our friend, Dr. Natalie Azar, to walk us through the science behind booster shots. Good morning, Dr. Azar. So first, I'm hoping just I would love if you could give us some context because we've talked so much about vaccines, so much about shots. And just kind of remind us here. I mean, we do get the flu shot every year, that type of thing. So, you know, like this is not anything that necessarily means something is wrong, I don't think. So just walk us through that. But also what this means for those who've gotten the Pfizer vaccine. And could those who receive the Moderna or J&J vaccines expect one in the future? Because obviously we know that we all just got whatever shot was available here. So what does it mean for everyone? Exactly. So here's kind of like the overall theme uh, for you guys this morning is that the possibility that we will need a booster shot is definitely out there. But when and in whom is still the big unanswered question. Mm. And those questions were not answered by the Pfizer report or, or their statement released yesterday. Essentially, what they, what they told us was that if you give an individual who's received the two course, the two dose regimen of the Pfizer vaccine, you give them a third dose. Okay, so you have a five to 10 fold higher antibody, neutralizing antibody titer. That is expected, right? Every time you boost with a vaccine, you're going to get this, you know, correlative rise in the antibody mm. titer. But here's the kicker. We don't know. There's no evidence right now. We'll see if they have anything to show us. There's no evidence right now that if you have been fully vaccinated in the U.S. with any of the three mm. currently available vaccines, that you've lost your immunity. We mm. think that that is still durable, and that includes Moderna and J&J. &J. The big question will be, or, the, or the, our thinking will change about this once we start to see breakthrough infections with Delta that are landing people in the hospital, mm -hmm. okay, not just mild illness, but in the hospital, right. I want to know whether or not you get a breakthrough infection with Delta, do you get long COVID? We don't have data mm. on that. And probably the most important thing is, if you've been vaccinated, can you transmit the Delta virus to somebody else? That Those are big unanswered questions. Right. When those things start shifting, it might be time for a booster. So let's talk about timing here on a couple different aspects, right? So when would we get that type of information? When would we start to see that type of information? And a lot of folks in this country started to get these vaccines back in December, that means we're beyond mm -hmm. those six months um, yeah. that Pfizer is talking about. And by the way, those are exposed healthcare workers. Those are doctors and nurses on the front lines. Should they be worried? So, well, I, let me give you a little personal anecdote. You yeah. know, I, we've reported on this show also that, that we're doing, we're, we are one of many centers that are studying the, the durability mm -hmm. and the vaccine response in healthy individuals as well as in people who are immunocompromised, right? So everything that I'm saying really applies to individuals who are under the age of 65 and don't have any other medical conditions or on medications that could theoretically dampen the immune response. The issue, I just had my six month antibody titer check on Tuesday. I was trying to get the results before today. <laughs> shows. Um, but unfortunately, they're not available yet. But here's the thing. Even if we see antibody levels decline, and this is so important, the durable immunity is not really related to antibody titers. It is very, very much a function of two other parts of your immune system, the T cell immunity and the B cell memory. And these things are not being discussed enough, frankly, by the, farm, by the vaccine makers from Pfizer. They're not studied in commercial tests. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people need to feel very confident that if they did get the vaccine, there is very likely to be this other arm of the immune system that is giving them protection. And to your point, Yasmin, well, it's really real world data. A really important point that I want to make is that the CDC right now is not tracking mild or asymptomatic breakthrough cases with Delta or any mm. variant. And this is really important because we do need to know if people are getting mild infection from Delta again, because can you transmit in that instance? Can you get long COVID? We don't have that data. We only have those the, the data on severe breakthrough cases. But basically, it's just time will tell. You know, we have laboratory data. How are the antibodies doing in the blood? We have clinical data, and then we have real world data. And all of that takes time to accumulate really and sift through and interpret before we can start telling people it's time to booster. So Dr. Azar, let's kind of uh, keep in context the two things that we're talking about here, which is the potential booster shot, and now we're also talking breakthrough cases. So as people yes. start hearing, okay, hey, I got Pfizer, to Yasmin's point, about six months ago. They're saying maybe six months you need a shot or what? It's basically like I'm no longer vaccinated. No, you're telling us that you still have some protection here. So if you could Absolutely. be getting those breakthrough cases and you're saying that the CDC is not tracking those mild ones, just explain to people what could potentially happen to them. I mean, is this just a very mild 
case of COVID, especially as we're hearing symptoms are changing, almost feels like allergies, almost feels like a sinus infection. And then what do people need to do to protect others, though? Like what needs to be reminded here? Getting tested, staying home, what is it? Well, that's the thing. And and so these are such good, you guys have really good questions this morning. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think that we might be shifting into this place where we all need to start to get very comfortable with the idea that COVID is probably not going away. Mm. And, you know, when we get the flu shot and we encourage people to get the flu shot, we don't necessarily promise them it's going to prevent the flu. In fact, it's only 40 to 60 percent protective mm -hmm. or effective in a good year, but we do tell them that if they get the flu shot, they're probably gonna have milder illness mm. and they won't end up in the hospital. And I think that's kind of the narrative. You know, I think we got very, not complacent, but you know, so excited about 90% effective, like as right. if we're never going to get sick with COVID. But to your point, if you've been vaccinated and get sick, even with a bad variant, do you stay out of the hospital and do you prevent transmission to other people? I think those are the two biggest questions. And of course, do you not get long COVID? Because that's really, mm -hmm. really huge. And if all of those things are true, then everybody should feel very confident that they are protected at this point. We could talk for another hour because I yeah. got like 20 more questions, but we don't have the time, <laughs> Dr. Azar. Until next time. Thank you, Dr. Azar. Hey, NBC News viewers. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.